okay so uh, welcome back i'll continue from where i stopped there earlier so uh, to explain what z does so now i will just explain how the circuit we're about to design how it works so what it actually did, does is it creates just a very short table of tangents compared to the normal lookup table that usually goes in a room now let me, let me show you in fpga what what it looks like this is, this is the the table here a lot of uh, red red marks i'm very sorry i have a small baby around here as always making making a lot of noise around stop so what makes codic different from the normal lookup table we are finding tangents and the rest is this is what you use just a very small a number of values ranging from you know it finds tangent ranging maybe 10 like here is 16 16 values ranging from tan 1 over actan 2 raised to power and from 0 to actan 1 over 2 raised to power 1 to 1 over 2 raised to power 2 up to 1 over 2 raised to power n so you know is it, oh, why, why are you using this probably to find sign, sign or a phase shift it doesn't get the actual value instantly what it does is it compares it compares the angle you are looking for and a particular value so in this case it starts from zero it, it shifts to this angle it checks are we yet at the particular angle we are looking for no the next time it tries this angle the next time it tries another angle up to 1 over 2 to power n when, when i'll be discussing the the logism circuit you understand this more but don't get scared of it this is just what the whole idea of the the codec this is the main 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 equation here but the velo code looks uh, cumbersome and very big so I, I will do an example here so just know that the difference is just that we introduce z z just keep keep uh, track of the uh, theta is used to store theta you know uh, theta theta was converted to this 2 to minus n so and for this part uh, for this particular implementation we'll do a lot of iteration so for every iteration z is used to store the last value of theta so let's let's go again Let, this is an example i did now as we want to calculate sine 30 i don't know if i should explain this or i, I explained it very well here so I, I will just probably ru uh, rush it so let's assume you are trying to find sine 30 degrees remember i told you already if you are using this box to find signs of angle you have to set your y to zero set your theta to the angle you are looking for and set your x to that 0 0.607 if not if you are going to put values of x and y that means you are looking for a phase shift so but here we are implementing using it to find signs of angle so this is the first step here now for this theta again you are going to put this is how you process the theta you know you won't put your 30 degrees instantly we are dealing with bin binary so you need a lot of conversion now depending on how many bits of processing you are doing like normally for the design we are using a 16 bit iteration 16 bit input so you now say 360 degrees that is a full circle is equal to 2 raised to power 16 then 30 degrees is equal to what we do cross multiply this elementary mathematics what we are doing here is we are trying to scale this 30 degrees that is trying to convert it to bits so we won't convert 30 instantly so we use a scale to do it by saying 360 which is the maximum is equal to 2 raised to power 16 we are doing 16 iteration 
and we are using 60 bits i will explain reason for the iteration uh, later so this is the conversion we use to convert whatever angle you are looking for so after this 30 times raised to power 16 divided by 360 you now get this so this is the value you will put as your theta not 30 you won't put 30 as your theta you put this value as your theta probably you convert it to binary also so then again now instead of a lookup table you now make just a very small table of arc tangents with theta ranging from these uh, uh, values your n will depend on the number of situation why do we have these steps you know already from the circuit that do you know original circuits have tan theta but this circuit doesn't have tan theta it has a uh, two ways to power minus n so we are finding the arc tangents of all of them so we'll now be doing two ways to power minus zero and minus already means one over two ways to power maybe one two three four and so on and so forth so that is why we have this uh, multiplexer here this uh, multiplexer sorry excuse me this multiplexer stores all those values here all those values are stored there in this uh, multiplexer here depending on which one you, are, you need it will help you and make a selection so we are now going to start from zero so arbitrarily the calculation starts from zero so this is going to start from zero and continue rotation until it gets to that particular angle we are looking for so assuming you are looking for for angle of that so the circuit starts from zero you first of all keep going up until it gets to 30 at times it will skip 30 it comes back and check it will be doing like this oscillating until it gets exactly at 30 so how does he know these uh, angles? It uses this our lookup table here to locate the angle. First of all, you can check this. Use there's a a, a web website online, uh, pivottables.com, uh, where where you can get this uh, val this uh, values. So, for instance, it starts from actan one over two raised to the power zero, which is actan one is equal to forty five. Act on one, one, one over to 1.5 is equal to 25.0. Roughly around 28, sorry. Then the other is so it actually keeps decreasing. This is something like 14, 7, 3, 0, point, okay, 0 point 0.4, and so on and so forth. So this is what these values will give you. When you take the arc uh, tangent, it's already been stored here already in the multiplexer. So what it does is, for every iteration, it will be picking all these angles, so one, one after the other, one after the other. So, assuming you are looking for for 30 degrees here, sorry, 30 degrees here, it starts from zero, it shifts 45, then it shifts 28, shifts 14, shifts 7, shifts 3. Shift 0 0.4. So this is how we do it. From 0, you shift 44, 45. 45 will now pass your 30. But this first shift is a positive shift in the positive direction. So your S will be positive. Then the next, since 45 have passed your the angle you are looking for, which is 30, is going to come back. So it now comes back by 28. It moved up 45. It comes back by 28. So you know this 28 is a negative sheet because it's going in the opposite direction. It is, it is going to be a minus. S your S will be a minus. Then when it comes here, it has passed your 30, so it needs to go back. So it goes back by 14. So by 14, it gets somewhere around here. So the 14 actually and the 14 is a positive shift. So here is positive. Here is positive. So when he, he comes here, he checks uh, this particular position is greater than your 30, so he needs to go back. Then he goes back 7. 
so the 7 actually is the negative shift so it gets to this 7 so whenever it gets here it now lands on the 30 it's not composed with my land when it, when it comes to this particular place so when it gets to your particular angle then you you have now gotten your your answer so that's basically how this implementation works so that's why we describe them as iterations starting with this one is n equal to 0 n equal to 1 n equal to 2 n equal to 3 n equal to 4 n equal to 5 i think i've done so much enough to explain this the best way i can so but the codec is actually a very simple implementation of sine angles though so I, I would like if you go through through this site so you now see how I did the intuition I already explained them there I explained them iteration by iteration first iteration second iteration third iteration fourth iteration fifth iteration sixth iteration until we got to something that looks like an angle we're looking for 30 there's no 7 so at the end we got something like this 30.712 so which is almost what we are looking for so if you go through this website you that particular uh, example i give explains everything please so now this is what so when you go down this is the velo code for the implementation now if you go through the through the logism code this is what the logism looks like so let me zoom out so you see everything so this, this is just a very basic implementation and this particular basic this particular circuit is the core and this is equivalent to this is equivalent to this i already explained to you i know that that equation is the same with this so i'll show you what this implementation does and this is the logic in code these are all the input it takes just the way i already explained it earlier so aside from the ones already listed it has these three set of inputs which is very Composed with for any composed with for any digital circuit, you need your reset your clock. The enable is just to enable the whole circuit to work. Now, your Z is where you put your theta. Your X, your X. I already told you X to be zero point six zero seven or so. That is if you are calculating for sines and cosines. For phase shift. You have to put your initial value, the initial coordinate x1 and y1. Then this is your y1. Now your pipe ID is which is represents n. Which iteration are we at? Are we in the first iteration? Are we in the second iteration? Are we in the third iteration? Are we in the fourth iteration? Iteration. So that's what basically the pipe ID does. Is same thing as n from what we treated earlier. So at the end of the day, these, these, these are your outputs. You get your new coordinates, S of 0, Y of 0, and the new angle here. Depending on what you are looking for. But at the end of the day, the top circuit didn't put Z because they're only interested in the phase shift, which will only give you S1 and then y, y0. But I already told you, depending on how you set your inputs, we determine what you will get. So then again, please go to the site to understand this block. Once you understand this block, the circuit is very easy to understand. So I actually zoomed out just to show what uh, it does. This is the main core. So I'll show you the rest. So okay, this is the top so what this does this is the iteration unit so each of this block is the same as this uh, core here 
So it takes this score and repeats the same whatever you're getting as the output here as your x y x of zero or zero z or zero is still fed back here as an input so this is how the iteration occurs from this block it takes it here it repeats the same thing takes it back here repeats the same thing takes it takes it back here so it's going to start from your x of zero to your x of n depending on how many iterations so here i can actually count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen that is from zero to fifteen it iterations so why is it doing these itera uh, iterations so because just like i explained uh, earlier it was a very hard thing for me to this to this discover actually it continuously compares compares the current value with the value you are trying to get so and this pipe id stores your n this pipe id stores which iteration are we in the first iteration or second iteration so what this pipe id does is for whatever iteration we are in it keeps incrementing so you can see here what the pipe id looks like here is one, the next one is two, the next one is three, that's what is being fed into the pipe ID, the next one is four. So, so depending on what which block we are in, the pipe ID helps us to make a to know what is the value of n. So now you see it comes here and is it is used to it serves as an input to this uh, multiplexer so that is that means whenever we are in the first iteration that is iteration zero it selects this the next iteration it selects this next iteration it selects this that is because the numbers are increasing one after the other and all these are these angle bracket things are the, the actants of this two raised to power zero two raised to power one two raised to power two until two raised to power n so that is what it does it compares our value just if you go through to the site you you see this example i gave it continuously compares it with this value here two raised to power zero is 45 act and one is 45 the next one is 28 the next one is i think 14 so what it does is for whatever iteration we are in it checks it compares it with this that is and it always starts from zero and if we are trying to find the uh, assuming is we are looking for 30 so 45 already when it compares it with 45 it takes it past it checks first of all is it compares zero with 45 it takes it it crosses it 28 it brings it back 14 it takes it here it keeps doing this until we get to our central the value we are looking for so that is the reason for the so many iteration then again when you will be when you will be going through the velo code you will see this left shift this uh, left shift sorry right shift Alright, shift means division in binary circuit. Whenever you're shifting, right shift, it means division. And it's actually shifting the X and the Y at the same time because those are the things that serve as the, as the input. And it's shifting depending on what pipe ID we are in. So this particular unit here represents this. Let me show you. Represent this. Two raised to power That's presents this. So I hope you are you are tagging along. So that is that means if we are in zero, it means two raised to power minus zero. If we are in if the paper ID is wrong, we are in two raised to power minus one. That is one over two raised to power one 
and what well, it already means division that is left shift and right left shift so a right shift means division in base 2 so this is what we have here I know is is shifting based on n so what we have here then also you come across here this multiplexer here makes the, the, the decision for getting the new values of x and y this particular code here is this more multiplexer is like your x it chooses whether to do what the uh, subtraction or addition so remember your x represents sign either minus or plus so so your x here depending on the value of the angle it, it compares with this angle to it checks whether it has passed or whether it has not passed the value if it, if it has passed that means it's going back so it means subtraction if it has not reached to the particular angle it means addition so that is basically what this multiplexer does here so and that is how it finally ends up implementing implementing this this is the formula here if you break it to the code this is it here so this particular value if z of n is greater than 0 is this this is the z of n is being compared So in the next next tutorial, I will explain how it works. Um, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.